Hey everyone, this is our detailed review of the mid 2020 Asus ROG Zephyrus S15 with an 8 core 10th gen Intel processor and Nvidia RTX 2080 Super graphics. We're going to focus on the performance gains and overall thermals and noise levels you should expect from this sort of hardware, as well as how it compares to the RTX 2070 Super variant also available on this laptop. But first, let's touch on the important design and ergonomics aspects. On the outside, not much has changed on this 2020 update as it builds on the same chassis and design lines of the 2019 Zephyrus S. That means that the Zephyrus S15 is still a compact and lightweight 15 inch notebook at around 2.1 kilos or 4.6 pounds in this top tier variant. It still also employs Asus's proprietary AAS cooling system, which mechanically raises the bottom of the laptop from the desk in order to improve airflow and isolates the components from the exterior with an extra sheet of metal, allowing the bottom to stay cooler in order to make this more comfortable when used on the lap. This aside, the S15 is still a mostly black laptop in this variant with a matte magnesium interior and underside and a brushed aluminum lid cover. Even if the porous magnesium on the main deck fence fingerprints better than other black materials, you'll still have to deal with them after using the laptop for a few days as you can see here, and the black keys and click pads still show finger oil after only a few hours of use. One design detail has changed on this 2020 update though and I'm glad it did. There's no longer a lit logo on the lid, instead that's black now and blends in smoothly with the overall dark theme. The RGB lights included within the cooling design are still there, and there's still no individual control over them. They are tied to the keyboard's illumination system, which means that the only way to adjust or switch them off is to adjust the key's intensity or completely deactivate their lighting. Now, as far as using it every day, the S15 is well made and practical. The main deck is sturdy and barely budges when pressed and the screen is fairly strong as well, with little warping and flex even when abused. Asus also smartly blunted all the corners and edges, so there's nothing that feels wrong when grabbing or using this device. The display is held in place by two lateral hinges and they allow to easily pick it up and adjust the angle with a single hand, but also keep it well in place, so it doesn't wobble when typing. I still wish the screen could go back past 145 degrees, but that's not possible with this design. And while we're nitpicking, I do have to mention the status LEDs and the power button, both always lit and annoyingly placed beneath the screen, so you'll notice them when watching a movie in a dark room. The speakers haven't changed either. They fire through the belly and get fairly loud, but are the standard kind of middling quality speakers you'll get with gaming laptops these days, so you'll want to hook up some proper headphones for better sound. When it comes to the I.O., Asus finally included Thunderbolt 3 support on the Zephyrus lineup, with video, data and charging. This adds up to the USB-A, HDMI and LAN connectors and most of the ports are lined on the left edge, with the USBs on the right. That means that the only thing missing here is a card reader, as well as uh, any sort of biometrics. Oh, and there's also no webcam, a common trait for the entire Zephyrus lineup. I personally don't mind it that much, but I agree that this is one of those features that you won't care about until you'll eventually need it. This offers a good quality Full HD external webcam accessory, but you'll have to buy it on the side in most regions, and I feel this should have been included with a standard bundle. As far as inputs go, the S15 gets one of the better keyboards available on compact performance laptops these days. It's still the kind of shallow implementation with short travel distance that you can expect in this class, so it feels closer to an ultrabook than to a desktop keyboard, which means that some of you might need time to get used to it. I for one, coming from the XPS 13, felt right at home with this keyboard, liking it more and more the longer I used it. However, the keys take a bit more force to depress than I'd want to, which means that you need to press them vigorously and all the way down for proper actuation, which takes a toll on accuracy. On the other hand, this keyboard is a quick and quiet typer, and the softly coated keys feel nice to the touch. The layout is pretty standard for the class, without a numpad section, but with well-sized and spaced main keys, a slightly taller bottom row and two sets of function keys at the right and the top left part. The keys are also RGB lit, with per key control, bright LEDs, three brightness settings to choose from, and little to no light creeping from under the keycaps. Swiping your fingers over the clickpad immediately activates the illumination, just as it should. And Asus also implemented a useful caps lock indicator within the caps lock key. However, the F1 to F12 writing on the top row of keys is still not backlit, and that's why finding the right F key in the dark takes some guessing. Asus have addressed this issue on the 2020 Zephyrus M15, but not here. The clickpad is averagely sized and centered on the chassis and not beneath the space key. It's a smooth glass surface with precision drivers and handles everyday use and gestures just fine. The implementation feels a bit sturdier than on the 2019 Zephyrus S and no longer rattles when tapped firmer, and the physical buttons are clicky, but a bit clunky. For the screen, the 2020 Zephyrus S15 gets the MAT 300Hz IPS panel made by AU Optronics, 
which is pretty much the go-to in this class right now. This is an excellent panel for gaming with fast refresh and response times, and I haven't noticed any overshoot or ghosting issues during my gameplay. Just as on the previous Zephyrus S generation, this version also offers either discrete or hybrid modes, and G-Sync is enabled with discrete, further enhance the gaming experience by reducing input lag and tearing. Switching between the two modes is an option in Armory Crate and requires a restart. I'll also add that as long as you're using the laptop on the hybrid mode, which enables the Intel iGPU and Optimus, the system automatically lowers the screen's refresh rate to 60Hz when unplugging in the laptop from the wall, and resets it back to 300Hz when plugging it back in. This helps save battery life and it's a much needed tweak, as the Zephyrus S15 still bundles a 76Wh battery, the smallest in this class. As a result, expect about 3-4 hours of daily multitasking and 6 plus hours of video on the hybrid mode, and a lot less on the discrete mode. A full-size 240W brick, which weighs about 0.8 kilos, is still required to power the components in this notebook, but USB-C charging is also supported through the USB-C port on the left side. A USB-C charger is not included in most regions, though. Back to the screen, this panel is also a great option for daily use, with good contrast and viewing angles, good colors and fair brightness at a little above 300 nits. This might not suffice for very bright environments, but will do just fine indoors. Otherwise, with 72% Adobe RGB color coverage, this panel should be ok for occasional color work, although professionals might need a higher tier panel instead. Looks like Asus don't offer one for the Zephyrus S15 2020 series, but they do offer a 4K 100% Adobe RGB option for the 2020 Zephyrus M15, as well as for their Studiobook Pro lineup. Finally, I'll mention that light bleeding around the edges is often an issue with this Aeotronics panel, and there's some of it on our model as well, although not really as bad as on the Triton 500 implementation we've reviewed earlier. This is unfortunately a random issue with current screens, so just test for it on your panel and send the laptop back if the bleeding is unacceptable. Ok, let's talk specs and numbers now, but first keep in mind that our unit is a pre-release sample and certain aspects might change on the retail store models. Still, it performed as I was expecting, that's why I'm confident sharing our findings with you. Specs-wise, the 2020 Zephyrus S15 gets an 8-core Intel Comet Lake i7 10-8750H processor, which outperforms the 6-core i7 9750H in the previous generation by a fair margin, but still requires a lot of power at full load, as still a 14 plus 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 nanometer bin. Asus opted to not include the i9 on this laptop, and that's smart, as the i7 offers almost the same performance in this sort of a chassis, at a lower price. As for the GPU, what we have here is the top tier NVIDIA 2080 Super in a Max-Q implementation, with variable power limits between the several performance modes, starting at 60W on the silent profile, and up to 105W in certain titles on the turbo profile. The thermal module can cope with this sort of power, as it was previously designed to cool a 150W RTX 2070 in the 2019 Zephyrus S generation. And on top of that, Asus also apply liquid metal compound from the factory on their 2020 ROG line. The updated Intel platform also supports 3200MHz DDR4 memory here, and our configuration gets 32GB of RAM in dual channel. 16GB of RAM are soldered on the laptop's motherboard, so there's a single DIMM available inside for upgrades. That means that while in theory you can put up to 48GB of RAM on this notebook, only 32GB will work in dual channel, and that is the configuration I'd recommend. As for storage, our unit gets two Western Digital middling quality drives in RAID 0, and I'd expect something similar on the retail models, as ASUS tends to not include top grade drives in their Zephyrus models. Nonetheless, these are still plenty fast for gaming and daily use in this RAID 0 implementation, just know that you can replace them with a faster storage array if that would benefit your workloads. Getting to the components is fairly simple. The laptop opens from the bottom, but you'll have to remove the AAS piece of magnesium first, which is held in place by four tiny screws. Then you'll have to take care of the other screws around the bottom panel in order to get inside. All these screws are easily accessible, but ASUS uses several different sizes, so make sure to carefully note where each comes from, so you can put them back in the right place. Inside you'll find the single RAM slot, the two SSD slots, the battery, the speakers, and the complex thermal module. Specs aside, ASUS offers four power profiles for the GX502. Turbo and manual are only available with the laptop plugged in and are meant for gaming and other demanding loads. Performance is a jack of all trades and what I'd recommend for daily multitasking and casual gaming, while silent is great for video and light use on battery. 
further GPU overclocking is possible on manual, but don't expect much, as the chip is already considerably overclocked on the turbo mode, which does a great job of squeezing excellent performance out of this configuration. On to our performance findings, we ran a couple of different tests on our review unit, from the standard synthetic benchmarks like Cinebench R20 or Geekbench, to Blender, SpecView Perf or Handbrake, which simulate real-life work with professional applications and video encoding. We've also ran the combined 3 d Mark tests and gathered all our results in these charts. Feel free to pause to see how the Zephyr S scored and how it stacks against some of its competition, and make sure to head over to the written article on the site for the more in-depth performance analysis and tests. I've added the link for you in the description. The Zephyr S15 also does a good job at maintaining top performance in longer duration loads. However, as illustrated by our Cinebench loop test, the processor needs to run at an average of around 70 Watt on turbo in order to return the results that it does. Even so, the CPU only stabilizes at around 3.6 GHz, down from its maximum 4.3 GHz all-core turbo potential. It would require at least 100 Watt of constant power to run at maximum, which is just not possible on this sort of a chassis. Undervolting is also disabled with the retail BIOS due to Plundervolt, but we were able to undervolt this on a pre-release BIOS version, which resulted in higher scores and lower power use. Thus, undervolting would surely help here if ASUS decide to eventually allow it on this series. Overall though, the 2020 Zephyrus S15 scores 20-25% higher in the Cinebench loop test compared to the previous model. Furthermore, you'll notice that the 35W i7 10850H processor on the silent mode performs nearly the same as the 6-core i7 9750H on the previous Zephyrus S at 65W of power, and that's impressive. At the same time though, the fact that the Ryzen 7 and 9 processors in the more compact Zephyrus G14 end up beating the 8-core uh, Core i7 at pretty much half the power consumption show the current state of AMD Zen 2 platform and how much Intel need to catch up now. Button point, the bump to the 8-core Intel i7 processor allows the updated 2020 Zephyrus S15 to outmatch the 2019 model in multi-threaded loads and tests, but with the same high power requirements. The gains in single-core performance and games are minimal though. Now, as far as gaming goes on this laptop, we ran a couple of titles on several different power profiles and gather our findings here. Take a moment to go through them. And here's how this Zephyrus S15 compares to a couple of other gaming laptops uh, in this class. I've added the RTX 2070 super-powered Zephyrus M15 and the RTX 2080 super-powered Predator Triton 500, both on a 6-core Intel 10th gen platform, as well as the previous RTX 27 150 watt powered 2019 model on the Zephyrus S15. Back to the 2020 Zephyrus S15, both the CPU and GPU run fairly hot on turbo. The CPU peaks at temperatures in the high 80s in Far Cry 5 and low 80s in Witcher 3 and Red Dead Redemption 2 and the GPU averages low 80s to high 70s in all these titles, while the fans ramp to 50 to 51 dB at head level. These temperatures are not unexpected given the laptop's compact and slim chassis, and the CPU actually runs a bit cooler than on the previous Zephyrus S15 and most other similar ultra portables. Gaming on the performance profile tames down the fans to about 44 to 45 dB at head level, but limits the CPU and GPU. This results in a roughly 10% drop in frame rates in most titles, but also further raises the average CPU and GPU temperatures. Finally, gaming on silent further quiets down the fans to only 36 to 37 dB at head level, but also further limits the performance of the CPU and GPU. The thermal profile is a little too aggressive on silent with this latest BIOS profile, and that occasionally causes the GPU to throttle down to 300 MHz as soon as it reaches 78 degrees, and then bump back once it cools down under 70 degrees, as you can see from these logs. I'm pretty sure this bug will not carry onto the retail models, as I didn't encounter it on the pre-release BIOS version while testing the same laptop or on the Zephyrus M15. Instead, in that case, the GPU ran constantly at 60 Watt, but with slightly faster spinning fans at around 38 to 39 dB, which I believe are the ideal settings for the silent profile. As far as external temperatures go, the interior reaches temperatures in the mid-50s in the hottest parts around the heat pipes, but the lower half and the WHD and arrow keys stay within high 30s to low 40s, so heat won't be an issue with longer gaming sessions. The bottom also stays fairly cool for this sort of a laptop, but it's only an illusion, as the hottest part is hidden behind the magnesium flap. Gaming aside, both fans remain active all the time, even with light use, but they spin quietly on the silent and performance modes, and are pretty much inaudible even in a completely quiet room. You will hear them if you keep the laptop on turbo while plugged in.
Long story short, the 2020 Asus Zephyrus S15 GX502 refines on what was already a solid performance ultra portable, the 2019 Zephyrus S, and it is one of the best devices you can buy in this niche right now. In comparison, this performs roughly 20-25% better in CPU intensive loads and about 10% better in games thanks to the updated hardware. It also runs slightly cooler and quieter across the board, but even so, the CPU, GPU and parts of the outer chassis will consistently reach high temperatures with games and complex loads. And the fans ramp up to around 50 dB on turbo, so you'll still need good headphones to cover them up. Undervolting would have helped with all these issues, but for now it is not possible on the retail models. Aside from the bump in specs, the 2020 Zephyrus S15 also gets a slightly cleaner design now, Thunderbolt 3 support, a 300Hz screen with dual G-Sync or Optimus operation modes, as well as one of the better keyboards in the class. At the same time though, the 2020 Zephyrus S15 is a significantly more expensive product now, which is something you should consider in your buying decision. This top configuration retails at $29.99 MSRP in the US and around €3300 in Germany, and it is overall priced alongside the competition, such as the Acer Predator Triton 500, the MSI GS66 Stealth or the Razer Blade 15 Advanced. On the other hand, last year's Zephyrus S15 started at $23.99 for the RTX 2070 model and is available for less now with discounts. We're going to have a proper roundup comparison of all these performance ultra portables once we get to test them all so look forward for our updates. Anyway, this pretty much wraps up our review of the 2020 ASUS ROG Zephyrus S15, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this product. Get in touch in the comment section down below, hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to our channel to get notified when we publish more videos. Catch you later.